This is Geometry Lesson 3-2. In this lesson, we're going to discuss rotations. Now, when you started your reading, they talked about a fox and how he turned his head and how that turn is like a mathematical rotation. And so, to begin this lesson, I'm going to talk about a rotation in terms of this person, Kathy, in this example one, and her dog, Susie Q, who's running around in a counterclockwise direction. Now, Kathy has a field of vision, which is 140 degrees. So if Kathy is standing right here, she can see straight ahead, she can see 70 degrees this way, and she can say see 70 degrees this way. So that would get her a field of vision of 140 degrees. Now her dog is running counterclockwise, and we'll just use A from looking ahead. Point A is where Kathy's looking straight ahead and her dog is running counterclockwise around her. And the dog, Susie Q, stops right directly behind Kathy. So the question is, how far does Kathy need to rotate her head in order to see her dog, Susie Q, given that she can see, has a field of vision of 140 degrees? So we notice that Kathy can turn not too far, and she will see Susie Q. But let's take a look at this in a mathematical way. We know from A to S is 180 degrees because that makes a semicircle. If 70 of those degrees are in Kathy's field of vision to the left or counterclockwise, then the rest of the way that she would need to turn would be 180 minus 70, so 110 degrees. So that means Kathy would turn her head or as a math ma in a mathematical term, Kathy would rotate her head 110 degrees in order to see her dog, Susie Q. In this video, I'm not going to take you through the process of a rotation by hand or on a DGS or your CAS calculator. But what I do want to do is talk about an actual rotation, the terminology that goes along with a rotation, and some general direction as to how a rotation happens on paper or on a DGS, but the actual learning of how to do those things will take place in our classroom. So here I've taken a figure and I've marked it all up. What I have here to begin with was a, fig a triangle. We call that triangle PQO. And we have the center point here, G. And what we're going to do with that in class is we're going to rotate this triangle about our center. That's how we talk about it. We rotate our triangle about our center and we're going to rotate it 100 degrees. Now that 100 degrees is a positive 100 degrees, so that means that I'm going to rotate that in a counterclockwise direction. So all rotations that have a positive rotation, or we also call that a magnitude, that has a positive magnitude, it goes counterclockwise. If I wanted to rotate it a negative 100 degrees, then I would actually rotate it clockwise. So a very important piece here. Counterclockwise rotations are positive, clockwise rotations are negative. Now if you look down here, we have our triangle PQO. And as we stated above, the original triangle that I'm starting with is called the pre-image. The image that I end up with, or the triangle that I end up with, is called the image. And to do a rotation, we take and rotate each individual point of the figure. So in this case, I'm going to rotate my point P 100 degrees down here. I'm going to take my point Q and rotate that 100 degrees, and my point O, and I'm going to rotate that 100 degrees. So if you notice here, I have little dashes next to the, the letters. Those dashes are called prime symbols. So a, a point that has been moved or rotated has the point P and a prime. So our new triangle is called triangle P prime, Q prime, O prime. So that's how we know that that triangle is an image of our original P, triangle P, Q, O. So now, if you look here, you can see that my P forms a 100 degree angle with my center, the center point being the vertex of that 100 degree angle. And I could test that with all of the points, Q to G to Q prime would also be 100, and same with O to G to O prime. That would also be 100 degrees. So here's an example of a triangle that has been rotated 100 degrees 
It's a positive rotation in a counterclockwise direction. I have an example here that we're actually going to do in class, but there's some things about this example that I want to talk through in the video first. So here it says I want they want you to draw the rotation about point D of 110 degrees with our pre-image of triangle ABC. So I want to just talk you through the notation because sometimes that can be tricky. So when you look at this, I have decoded the symbols here for you. So a capital R means a rotation. This first letter here stands for the center point of our rotation. The numbers here stand for the magnitude of the rotation. So it's a positive 110, so we know that it would go counterclockwise. And the letters in parentheses is the letter or is the name of the figure that's being rotated. So here this is my pre-image. And then when you do the rotation in class, we're going to label that image triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So that is our image. And here you can notice, here's an example um, of what your finished product is going to look like. And once again, if you take and measure from, we'll take point A, so if you measure from A to D to A prime, this is our pre-image, this is our image, we would have 110 degrees. Here I have a list of all of the terms that we have discussed thus far. So if you, if you haven't had an opportunity to fill this information in, you may want to stop the video at this time and fill in the, the vocabulary words that we have discussed thus far in the video. Pre-image, image, magnitude, talking about clockwise and counterclockwise, and then the whole notation piece. I'd like to take a look at example number two here. I'm not going to have you do the actual measurement of this exam in this example, but I am going to talk you through the process, and then when we get to class, we will go through it together with the actual protractor and measuring. So here we have quadrilater quadrilateral Q prime, U prime, A prime, D prime. So if I go ahead and label that, we know it's the prime, so we know it's our image, and it states here it's the image of QUAD, so I'm going to label that one as P, pre-image, under a rotation about center P, what is the magnitude of the rotation? So for, before I even start measuring anything, I want to look and see the fastest route I can take to get my pre-image onto my image. So if I, I look at that, the fastest way is to go in a clockwise direction so I know it's going to have a negative magnitude. The next thing I would do is then take a set of points and here I've hinted at drawing angle A, P, A prime. So if I do that, I'm just going to draw in, and you're going to use your straight edge in class. You're going to draw your angle, and then you're going to measure it. And I'm going to tell you right now, the measurement is approximately 110 degrees. So we know the measurement of that angle is 110 degrees, but we know that it's going in a clockwise direction, so we would need to say that it was a negative 110 magnitude. As you move down the notes here, we see example three. We will definitely do this one in class with your CAS calculator. So if you have a CAS, please remember to bring that to class next time. The last thing I'd like to do in this video is discuss a couple real world examples that you'll be asked to do. You have a set of, of problems here, and many of these will be done in your notebooks when you come to class. But I'd like you to take a look at number four and number five. Through how many degrees does a minute hand of a clock rotate in five hours? So if you think about a clock, the minute hand of a clock, it rotates around 360 degrees. And how many times would it rotate in five hours? So there are 60 minutes in an hour, and that so that makes 360 degree rotation every hour. So we would want to take 360 times 5. So that would give me 1,800 degrees. And let's look at number 5. A, perf a diver performs one and a half somersaults during a dive. Through how many degrees does she rotate her body? So we know a full rotation is 360 degrees. She multiply er, times one and a half. That would give me 540 degrees. As I've stated several times in this video, we will do a, a lot more work with the actual performance of 
rotating figures on paper and um, with your CAS calculator. This concludes Lesson 3-2.